Okay, now we are going to the chapter plant tissues. What is a tissue? Tissue is nothing but a group of cells. So group of cells is called a tissue. Here are the group of cells. We call this group of cells as tissue. So we already studied about the cells in the previous chapter. We studied the structure and functions of cell. Now, what is the tissue? What is the use of the tissue? Why the cells are grouped to form tissues? Let us see an example. If you observe a unicellular organism like euglena or like a paramecium, like a paramecium or if you take a euglena. So these organisms, they have only one cell throughout their life. That means they carry their life, complete life cycle with only one cell. So these are living organisms. When do you say one organism as living? Well, it shows the, it shows the living characteristics. That means when it carries out the life processes. What are the life processes? Respiration and some kind of digestion. So these are the respiration, digestion, excretion, reproduction. So these are the life processes, excretion, reproduction. So this organism is able to carry out all the life processes, but it has only one cell. That means all these processes are carried out by only one cell. So the single cell is carrying out all the living functions. In case of a unicellular organism. Now, if you take another example like a multicellular organism, say for example, we take a plant, some plant, any hibiscus plant or rose plant, we take. Here we have a multicellular organism that is a plant. So this is multicellular multicellular it has got so many cells hundreds and thousands of cells if you look at this plant it has to perform different functions what are the different functions that this plant performs one is absorption so what kind of absorption it does the roots of the plant the roots they absorb the water and mineral salts from the soil so absorption by roots. The second thing, exchange of gases. Exchange of gases. So which part is responsible for this exchange of gases? That is leaf. In the same way, photosynthesis. Because plants prepare their own food by a process known as photosynthesis. And even for photosynthesis, leaf is the part which helps in the process of making food. And storage of food, storage. So the storage of the food, where does the food store? The food may be stored either in the leaves or in the fruits or in the roots, depends upon the plant. So if you see that different parts of a plant are performing different functions. why all parts cannot perform all functions say for example if you take the root can it perform photosynthesis no if you take the leaf will it absorb the water from the soil no because in multicellular organisms we find a specific organization of cells so here these parts have specific roles they have some specific roles leaf exchange of gases, transpiration, photosynthesis, root, absorption of water, fixing the plant in the soil, stem, conduction of water, taking the water and minerals up and down. So each part is performing a specific function. So each part of a plant is made up of special type of cells or different type of cells. That means the cells or the tissue we find in leaf is different from the tissue we find in root. 
In the same way, there are some kind of tissues which help in the growth of a plant, increasing the length, increasing the width, width of the plant. So these tissues are different from the tissues in flower. These are different from the tissues in leaf. So different parts of a multicellular organism are made up of different kind of tissues. So why they are made up of different tissues? Because a tissue, a specific tissue can perform a specific function. So they have to perform specific function. See the leaf. The tissue present in the leaf, it has to perform the function of photosynthesis. It has to perform the function of exchange of gases. So for that purpose, it is designed. The organization is designed. The cells are arranged in such a manner and even the cells or the tissues contain the specific required components, required minerals or pigments or whatever. So, so that is the reason why there is a variation of tissues in plant. So in this lesson, we are going to study about the different types of tissues found in plants, their structure and at the same time their functions, how they help for the plant to carry out its life activities or processes like respiration or absorption or exchange of gases or photosynthesis or whatever so let us see okay now let us look at the different types of plant tissues the first one is meristematic tissues so meristematic tissues or the tissues that help the plant in its growth and second one is dermal tissues dermal tissues they are in protective nature they form different types of coverings and protect the plant parts and the third one is ground tissue so this ground tissue it forms the base of different parts of the plant and the last one vascular tissues so these vascular tissues they help in transporting the substances or water in the plant so these are the four major tissues we find in a plant now let us talk about each of these tissues in detail so here we have different activities to observe the tissues under microscope all the activities are given in the practical dvd part so now we are moving to the theory part of this tissues. Okay, now we are going to talk about the first type of plant tissue that is meristematic tissues. So already I told you that these meristematic tissues, they help in the growth of plant. So the plant has to grow up to its maximum size. So the growth of the plant takes place height wise that means its height is to be increased at that same time the width or the girth the circumference of the stem also should be increased and at the same time the branching of the plant also should be increased then you can say the plant is growing up so for such a growth these meristematic tissues are useful for the plant so if we observe the tip of the plant so this is the tip part of the plant shown with the cells here at the top point of the tip we have apical meristem so these are a kind of meristematic cells that help the plant to increase its height this is the apical meristem so at the sides to increase the width of the plant, to increase the girth of the plant, here there are some other kind of meristematic cells called as lateral meristem. And there is one more kind of meristematic tissue that is found in between the layers of other tissues that is intercalary meristem. So the apical meristem of the plant helps the plant to increase its height whereas a lateral meristem it helps the plant to increase its width girth and the intercalary meristem it helps the plant to form new tissues that is to produce a stalk for flower or fruit or for a new branch 
so where a new branch or a flower or a stalk has to arise on the stem at that place this intercalary meristem will be active and this is also called as cambium cambium and it plays an important role in development of cells that is the growth at the point where a branch or a flower or a fruit arises on the stem so these are the different types of meristematic tissues apical meristem lateral meristem and intercalary meristematic tissues okay so we learned about the meristematic tissues now we see the second one dermal tissues so what are dermal tissues these are the tissues that form covering of a plant just like how we have our skin dermis like animals and humans have skin in the same way plants also have some kind of protective covering the main function of this tissues is protection the protective covering of plants is called as dermal tissues so where do we find these dermal tissues that is on the surface of the plant and its parts say for example if you have taken a leaf and if you cut the leaf if you take the thin 